How you doing? This is me, Harvey Hook. Uh, today we're doing a, or this week, we're more doing a sort of like a Cavalier animated video. Uh, I thought I'd do it, um, just because it would be really fun. And today, we are going to be doing something different. Let's just fucking change me to someone else. Today, we're going to be doing something that is three dating tips that literally any other dating coach will not tell you. Why? Because it's either controversial or because it is literally kept in the vault because we dating coaches like to keep the best for ourselves. So please, you're going to be super surprised as we go forward with this video because there are going to be stuff that you've either never thought of, never heard anywhere else on the internet, or if you have heard of it, maybe, and just maybe, it'll be the best refresher course you've ever had. So without further ado, let's get into it! Yeah! Alright, so the dating tips that I'm going to be giving you today work in a variety of different situations. The first situation, it could li literally be, what is this? That's that's a dating, that's dating situation. Regular old dating situation with these people. Um, you've also got uh, a situation like this, where you're a couple, and that could be cool, but it also works if you sort of look like this, uh, or also sort of like this as well. You know, um, it doesn't really matter because the stuff that I give, you all know or should know by now that really uh, it's universal. So the stuff that we give out, the the dating advice that we give out is quite universal. I will very, like, although my channel is Get Him Hooked, I really want you to realize that love is universal. You know, it's not really dictated by your gender, by your genitals, or by how you perceive yourself. Uh, unless you're asexual, and then that's okay, I don't, you know, there's probably another dating coach for you out there. But love itself being universal, you know, we, we sort of get confused when we say men are like this, women are like this, straight is like this, gay is like this. And so, we're going to be talking about these universal dating secrets, which might, you know, it's the it's it's how we what do we say they are banned let's just get this increased fucking banned dating secrets or better yet secret dating secrets holy shit this is exciting. So the first one I want to present to you is how to be noticed. Now, if you're in a situation oh fuck so, so the first one I want, fuck, fucking shit. So the first one I want to present to you is how to be noticed. Now, if you're in a situation where you've been really interested in someone, and or maybe you've been out, so for example, you're in a bar or in a club, and they just don't notice you, well, the secret behind that is obviously um, that you really, honestly, didn't stand out. Now, I know that's harsh to say, right? You didn't stand out. That's really harsh to say, but that's honestly the truth. If you are in a situation where someone loved you and left you, they loved you and left you, sort of like this, well, what happens is, is honestly, um, that person was looking for sex or looking for something else, and really, you didn't stand out enough. And I mean that in the most obvious, yeah, I have to be really honest with you because I know you're the kind of person that shines. And so this this also works with the relationships. There are people out there who are like, I just want like a one night stand. When am I gonna get it? Oh my God, when am I gonna get my one night stand? But what happens is, is they never get it because they're communicating the wrong things and they're not standing out. So we got to really get in touch with what that is and how to with that. So how do we stand out? Well, the first thing to standing out is actually, um, obviously, shine. What I mean by shine, it's sort of like saying the things you think you shouldn't say which is sort of like, you know, the little controversial things or... Today's culture is very politically correct. And so what that does is it's made a lot of people afraid to speak because they're afraid of offending another person. But when you're afraid of offending another person, what you do is you don't shine. And that's the key here is what I mean by shining, I mean letting your personality out, letting you be you. Now, some people are afraid of that because they don't, don't fully express themselves or every time they have, they've hurt someone. But the thing is, there is a nuance here because the things that make you probably a little little bit controversial or just mildly offensive are the things that are gonna make you stand out. For example, in my life, right? I have 
I never remember every single time I go to the car, you know, to unlock the car, start the drive. It's just, it's just one too many. And it's sometimes, and sometimes it's the same with people. Like there's just so much going on that it's impossible to keep track of every person you've met unless they hold a special place in your heart or unless they stood out. So what happens is, remember the whole story about me not remembering every time I go to the car? Well, you better believe I remember the time I went to the car and that and someone had broken into my car and there was shit everywhere. And so I'm not saying that you have to break into people's hearts, but what I'm saying is is that we can't be afraid to stand out. So things on how we stand out are sort of things like, well, how we stand out, we sort of have to start expressing ourselves a little bit. This might mean that we we say something that's a little bit controversial, or we express ourselves, or better yet, just be loud. That's one of my techniques that I personally like to use, by being loud, but loud is what people get it confused. They say, oh, I'm just going to do what you do, and I'm just going to go out and be loud and ostentatious and all this kind of stuff. That's not why my specific loudness works. Why my loudness works is because I'm actually being passionate. What I'm expressing is passion. I never speak to anyone that I can't be passionate with, and I'm always saying stuff that I am passionate about. So of course I'm going to get loud. Of course I'm going to get rowdy. And of course I'm going to attract a crowd. And of course when there's a crowd, people are going to be very interested in speaking to me because I'm then the center of attention. This is something that I personally learned when I... When I had stopped, when I gave up trying to impress other people, I was like, I'm just going to talk about the things I care about. When I spoke about the things I cared about, suddenly I had what I call an energetic flow. I was louder. I was more passionate. I was open. So as a result, people started to notice me and I stood out. I was suddenly that guy and you can be that person because remember, it, this shit doesn't fucking matter where you're in. It does not matter. So just express yourself. Express yourself before you mess yourself, because if you can't fucking express yourself, then you've already lost the game, or lost the, whatever it is, the, 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 the dating situation, you've already lost it, because then people are dating your games, people are dating the fucking make-believe bullshit version of you, and that is not how it goes, they want to date you, so get passionate, Get passionate, motherfucker! Anyway, so now we go on to part two. Now, if you're un- in curious about getting passionate, I uh, you can always email me, you can set up a call, and we can talk about what's specifically passionate about you. Because for me, what I really love about dating, especially the whole meeting people situation, is I never want it to be something that you do. The people that I work with become so fucking radiant that people are naturally attracted to them and isn't that good. I'd like to think... It may be a little bit good. So let's get into topic number two. Now this is this is the stuff that I personally am like, do I put this out online or do I not? So if this <clears throat> if this video goes viral, I'm doomed because if I ever want to meet someone or this is even non-romantic oh fuck. This is even non-romantic as well, because it's sort of like like, the, the stuff that I talk about is relationships. Remember that. So it can be romantic. It can be intimate. It can be normal. Um, it can be profound. It can be friendship. It can be workplace. It can be anything. Now, we specifically talk about more sexy, more intimate, more uh, romantic relationships because that's what a lot of people are interested in. And frankly, it's fucking great, especially when you know how it works. But when it comes to relationships, right? The relationships that you have, remember, it's a relationship between people. This is the stuff that you can use for any situation, non-gender, non-biased, non-romantic, non-whatever. And so have you ever met someone and you're sort of like, hey, I really want to connect with this person afterwards. And it's like, how do I get their number, right? So this what we're going to talk about is like the number or what we call details. Now, some people get obsessed about details because they're like, they, they think it means something. They're like, oh, fuck. So they, some people get obsessed about the number because they think it means something. They go, oh, I'm good. I get numbers. And if you've ever watched How I Met Your, Num- uh, How I Met Your Mother, Barney Stinson, that character, was always like getting girls' numbers. Like it meant shit. If you ever go out at night, this is, this is purely like going out, meeting people, and having fun like that. And, and it can work in any situation. But if you ever go out at night 
and get someone's number and then message them the next day and they don't reply. So maybe, just maybe, the number means fucking nothing! So we have to realize that it's the connection that means everything. The connection, online dating, offline dating, whatever. And you can do the stuff that I'm about to say even on a first date, even when you first encounter someone. Because when you first encounter someone, that's like a mini instant date. Especially if you're spending time one-on-one. Whether you've met some randomly at a grocery store and you've decided to go for a coffee right there. Or you've met online and you've gone for the first date. Regardless, this is a great way to connect, get the number, or exchange it for a reason. Now, obviously, the best reason is to just fucking want to get their number to talk with them more, but some people like to be a little bit of a smoothie. So we're going to be talking about the smoothiness here on how to actually be a little bit smooth. So how the fuck do we be smooth and smoking when it comes to exchanging the number? Well, the first thing is, is let me just get this down. So the first thing is, is have a reason. So talk about something, talk about something, something that you can then talk to them uh, later about. So that might be, hey, there's this great show. I should tell you about it. I'll text you the name. There might be another thing where it's like, hey, I, um, I, I, I saw this thing online. I'll send it to you later. What's your number? I'll send it to you. And there you've already got a conversation starter. There are going to be some people out there who are really shy and this is going to really fucking blow their mind because you got the conversation starter. Now, there are some people out there who are going to be like, eh, but Harvey, what about if I get them and it's just about the thing and whatever? Well, here's the thing. Getting the number, this motherfucking thing, is irrelevant. And I, I really, I really want to stress that. Exchanging numbers with someone especially if you're new to the whole dating scene, like fucking get it out of your head. It is, it's shit. It's pointless. It's not the be all and end all. What is the be all and end all is the connection. And there is a thing that we call the step ladder rule. The step ladder rule is if you're trying to climb the ladder of a relationship, hypothetically, and something does not work at this point, it's obviously not the thing that It's not your ability to get the number that didn't work. It was the fucking connection beforehand that didn't work. On the other hand, for example, uh, on the other hand, if we have, if it's, for example, you're trying to meet the parents and it's like, some people get obsessed. Like, how do I get him to meet the parents? I, I just, I just, I just, I just want, I just want him to meet my parent. What, what's going on? Why can't I get it to do it? It's not how you are getting him to meet the parents that's important. It's everything that builds up to that. Remember, it's the step ladder. It's not the step that you're taking. It was the steps before that was in the way. So it's sort of like if you're trying to figure out if you're in that mental space, you're like, but I just I can't. And you're not feeling it from your heart because obviously the logical best thing is to feel from your motherfucking heart. That's the best way to connect with someone because... You're obviously connecting with them with who you are and who they are, not like, oh my god, I've got to like think my way through this motherfucking situation. But it's if you're trying to think your way through it, you have to recognize that it's the steps beforehand that just wasn't how it worked. So for example, it's like going on a date. It's like you're texting and it didn't work and you ask them out. It's like, they just, you just, just didn't connect with you enough. That's, that's really how it works. So... Another another thing that you can do, now I've perfected this, this whole have a reason to a nutshell, like to a fucking fine, beautiful art, and that's because I'm a dating coach. Why? I am a coach with dating. That's what I do. I do relationships as well, and I'm really, I'm, I'm the one who gets people into the fucking long-term relationships that they want. I'm also the guy that will hook you up with that person. I'm also the guy that turns your relationship around. I'm also the guy that mops things up after... The uh, divorce is settled. I'm also the guy that gets you to be what we call parents, not partners. If you have kids, I do a number of stuff. I'm the fucking whiz at this stuff. And, you know, I'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. But how have I perfected having a reason to text back? Well, one thing I do, and this is the smartest way. And this is the way, right, that I am personally surprised that I'm giving this out online on a fucking YouTube video. This is stuff that I would do all the time. Friends, family, relationships, all this kind of stuff. Um, It's something I did accidentally, then I started doing it. And if you're personally close with me, you'll notice that I do it all the time. And why do I do it all the time? Because it fucking works. You can literally do it every single time. Just like, unless you like weirdly... uh, 
unless you're weirdly uh, incongruent with it, then don't do it. But what you do is, are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Take a photo and send it to them. So you take a photo and you send it to that person. But Harvey, if I, I take a photo with them, aren't they gonna, what? It's, it's like they're not gonna wanna text, what? How, how does it work? Well, how it works is, is it's a simple couple, few step process. Step one is have a good time with them. Get to know the fucking person. If you haven't, if you haven't connected with the fucking person, like none of this shit will work. Connect with them. Get to know them. Find out who they are. Laugh with them. You don't need to know too much about a person. That was the other secret that uh, I've learned through being a dating and relationship coach is that really, truly, people don't really need to know much about you to actually like you. They need to feel... They need to like how you make them feel. So that's the most important thing to remember. So how it works, step by step, connect with the human. Once you've connected with the human, then take a photo to mem- to commemorate that moment. Now this can work, Christmas parties, whatever, even in a bar, on the street, whatever. Take a photo. You're a selfie person. We're in a selfie world. Get the fuck used to it. Now step number three is then say, hey, um... I'll send it to you later. Now, don't get their number right there. I'll send it to you later. Seed it. We're going to be talking about seeding, hopefully in a second, if I've put that on the list that we're talking about here. Um, And then, so you're seeding it. And then, as you leave, hey, what's your number? I'll send it to you just so I, what's your number so I don't forget? Or... Uh, are we on Facebook? Let's be Facebook friends. Something, some way to connect. Now, remember, the way you connect is not as important as how you connect or the depth in which you connect. That, remember, will always take number one. But this gives you a reason to connect. I'm going to send you a photo. I'm going to send you a video. I'm going to send you something, or I'm going to ask you to send me something later. That starts the conversation. Now, if you are charming, if you are charismatic, and all that crap, if you want to learn how to be all that, email me at uh, Harvey at gethimhooked.com, or you can go to Instagram, gethimhooked.com. And fucking spam the fuck out of me. Just harass me. I get a lot of people messaging me. And honestly, um, sometimes I'm just like, fuck them. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'll speak to you. Who are you? Like, tell me your things. Let's talk about it. Let's get on a call. You're a great human being. I'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. Whoop. Now let's talk about number three. Now number three is talk about what you want. Now this is an interesting thing because a lot of people are afraid of this. But... If you really think about it, hmm, it's what actually works. So what I'm saying by talking about what you want, I'm saying that in the conversation to test whether or not that person is the sort of person that you want to be connecting with and is going to create the relationship that you want, talk about what you want. For example, if you want a relationship, talk about relationships. If you want sex, talk about sex. If you want something else, talk about that something else. If you want a groceries, talk about groceries. If you want a business partner, talk about business. Talk about it. About it. Talk about it. Don't be afraid to fucking not talk about it because when you talk about it, you will get a a vibe, right? You will not only get a vibe of them and you'll be like, oh, they're a business person. They're a sexy person. They're a relationship person. They're a they're a groceries person. The fucking groceries grocery person. But what will also happen is you will wet their whistle, so to speak. You will wet their whistle on on uh, on who and what kind of relationship is going to be. Now, one thing that's really worth that is worth, and a lot of people, you guys, don't recognize this, is a little law of conditioning. Now, conditioning, the law of conditioning is, is that we condition people. We condition people to be in relationships with us. Now, this is really important to recognize. It's through what you say, what you do, what you don't say and what you don't do that creates the relationship. For example, if you're too afraid to kiss that person and then you kiss that person later on, what will happen is is you've conditioned them that it's really not a passionate relationship. And if they are looking for that passionate relationship, they're going to be the ones who say, I just don't feel the chemistry. I just don't feel it. That's that's my impression of everyone. Not just you or you're the person that you're dating. That's, that's humanity. 
But that's what people do. When they say, I just don't feel the the connection, it means they didn't feel how they want to feel. And most people want to feel fucking passion. So get passionate. Ah! And so instead, right, we have to recognize we condition people to being to we condition people to be in relationships with us. Remember that. So when we condition people to be in relationships with us, we are telling them how to be around us. So if you want them as a business partner, if you want them as a friend, if you want them as a family, talk about that thing and see how well they integrate with it. If you talk about sex and they're like, sex is disgusting and you're a very sexually open person, that is not someone you want to connect with. Stop it right away because what will happen is, is that all you'll do is... You'll hurt them, you'll hurt yourself. It's a, not a strong enough connection for what specifically you're looking for. If you're talking about relationships, and they go, yeah, relationships suck, and you're like, and what happens to you is you say, hmm, I'm a relationship person. They say relationships suck. Maybe, maybe it's my job to fix them. No, it's never, never your job to fix someone or convince them. It's never your job to fix someone or convince them. But what happens is, is that it is your job to connect with the people that want to connect with you and to also stop fucking practicing negative fucking mindsets. That, this is bonus topic number three since we are, uh, number four, since we're going into it. Bonus topic number four is having versus wanting. Now, a lot of people practice wanting. They want the relationship. They want the... They, they want the relationship, they want the this, they want the that. But what they do is that they are, are always practicing wanting or getting there. And so once they have it, it's a bit scary. This is just a mindset thing. This is something that I work with my clients one-on-one. And if you want that, fucking message me. It'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. But when we practice having, it's a different vibrational alignment than wanting. So when we're wanting something, we want, 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 want. And when we have it, it's a bit too scary. So we go back to wanting. We self fucking sabotage. But if you go from having, 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 uh, what will happen is, is that you will, you'll get it because you'll be practicing a different mindset and it'll keep it because you are so used to having. That is a big difference. That's bonus topic number four, but that itself is a topic for another video. If you did like this video, make sure to subscribe. I don't know if I'll do more of these ones, but it'll be fun. Uh, and also like the fuck out of this video. And if you did watch all this way, write the word champion in the uh, in the in the description box, because then I know you're a human being and that you're great. And also make sure to text your mum. Uh, tell, her, tell her I said hi. Uh, and if you don't have a mother, text your father. If you don't have a father, text your friend's mum. Everyone's got a friend who's got a mum at the very least, unless you live in a mumless world. And also more importantly, um, go and live life unleashed. That's my new tagline, live life unleashed. Live life unleashed!